Welcome to Developing and Using Models, a Science and Engineering Practice. As seen here, learning expectations from the Next Generation Science Standards show a new emphasis in using and developing models in the classroom for students of all ages. For example, kindergartners will need to use models to represent uh, relationships between plants and animals, fourth graders to describe patterns in waves, middle schoolers to describe unequal heating of the earth, high school chemistry with the nucleus of an atom and fusion, fission, and radioactive decay, high school biology for cellular division, including mitosis, and earth science in the cycling of carbon within the different spheres. In order to begin using models in the classroom with students, we should first ask ourselves, what is a model? A model is an explicit representation used in science or engineering to visualize a better understanding of phenomenon or to create a better solution to a design problem. Each individual carries a set of mental models around with them. The problem with these mental models are their internal, personal, idiosyncratic, incomplete, unstable, but they are quite functional. The goal for K-12 science education should be to take those individual models and turn them into conceptual models, which are external, or take a consensus to create. These models are the core of modern science. They link theory with data and make phenomena visible for better understanding. They come in a variety of ways, diagrams, physical replicas, mathematical representations, analogies, and computer simulations. Most natural phenomenon today has a scientific model already associated with it. it. Began with millions of observations over many years, people noticing patterns in those observations, and then a model being developed from there. Some examples of those things are the structure of DNA and Newton's law of gravitation. As with all science and engineering practices in the next generation science standards, there's a quick K-12 learning progression for developing and using of models in the classroom. Listed here are the goals for developing and using models by the end of 12th grade. Students should be able to construct those models, represent and explain phenomenon with models, discuss limitations of a model, use and provide computer simulations as models, and make and use models to test design. If I take you to the Next Generation Science Standards where we can access the appendices with the science and engineering practices on there. It's www.nextgenscience.org. We'll click at the top tab where it says Next Generation Science Standards. This is the page you can access both the standards as well as the appendices. We are going to be working with Appendice F, which is the science and engineering practices. Once this loads up, you can see, as you scroll down the list of all eight of the practices themselves, where developing and using models is number two. Continue to scroll down. There's a lot of information here. Practice one. Continue on to get to practice two, the developing and use of models. At the bottom of this particular page, you can see that we have what students should be able to accomplish by grades K through 2 at the end of 2nd grade, by the end of 5th grade, by the end of 8th grade, and by the end of 12th grade. Keeping the end in mind in a learning progression is always a good idea. For instance, a kindergarten student is not going to be able to develop and use a model the way a 2nd grader can. However, knowing what a second grader should be able to accomplish by the end of their year is a good thing for a kindergarten and first grade teacher to keep in mind. The other piece, of course, is the more often the students use the skill, the better they will be able to develop and use models in a classroom. Prior to looking at the key elements of good use and development of models in the classroom is to take a look at what models are not. They are not art projects. They are not a means in which to label and visualize vocabulary, and they are not teacher-created. Instead, models are used to explain and predict ideas, relationships, concepts, systems, by building consensus in a social setting, 
so that masses can agree upon that particular model. The three key elements of modeling are model development, revisions in social settings, and evaluation. These three tools cannot be used one without the other and are continually being revisited. Professor Christina Schwartz and Professor Cindy Passmore created a, a webinar on the NSTA website in regards to developing and using models in the classroom. This is their model-based inquiry sequence which they suggest be used in a classroom as you develop models with students. It begins with asking a central or essential question, such as, why do certain conditions get passed down while you're studying heredity? Or, how are objects not visible to the human eye observed? This would lead students into developing their own initial models, first their internal one, and then creating a group model in small groups coming to a consensus on what, which one or a combination of a few works the best. Next, the teacher sets up, or students come up with their own, empirical investigations to explore and test their ideas that go along with that model. Of course, they collect data along the way. During that time, they also clarify and explore theoretical ideas or second-hand data, the things that other people know. After they've collected enough data, that model goes back for evaluation and consensus development within the students' small groups. At any given time, students may go back to either more testing or more research in order to get an even better model, uh, consensus model as they complete their task. Eventually, students will get to the point where they can apply that model directly back to that's an essential question, having not only answered it, but applied the best consensus model to take care of that particular, to answer that particular question. By using this model, students will also be using other scientific and engineering practices along the way. They will be engaging in argument about their models, analyzing and interpreting data to get empirical evidence, asking more questions and possibly defining more problems along the way, constructing explanations about their models, designing solutions that might uh, be from an initial problem. They're going to obtain and evaluate and communicate the information that they have gathered in order to better their model. And they're going to plan and carry out investigations along the way. Depending on the model that they are developing conceptually, they may even be able to use mathematical models in, um, along with this as well. In 1954, in The Nature of Science and Other Lectures, Edwin Powell Hubble is quoted as saying, Equipped with his five senses, man explores the universe around him and calls the adventure science. What a privilege it is for science teachers around the country to be able to share that and pass that on with their students. This concludes the video on developing and using models in the Next Generation Science Standards.